Welcome back guys, today we have another Rome 2 battle for you and to be precise a Rome 2 siege battle and it is a 3v4 uh, attackers v defenders battle, well, obviously attackers v defenders um, but uh, as the defenders today we have Rome and we have Egypt, uh, do we have two? No we have a Rome and Egypt and then a Carthaginian uh, defenders. This was sent in by the Rome player um, and it is a excellent, excellent battle. And uh, he's a, they are up against another Egyptian army. Actually, two uh, more Egyptian armies. Uh, a Pontus army, which is strange to see Pontus on the offensive. Also, just generally in a siege battle. Just not, I would say, in my opinion, one of the stronger factions. Um, for a siege battle, certainly. Maybe for an open battle, they've got some quite good uh, cav units. And we also have Kush. I've, um, which are also like again a very unusual faction to see, but they've got some pretty strong infantry, so I guess um, that's a fairly good reason to bring them. Um, right, so we'll go through the attacking armies first and their army comps quickly. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll put a time down if you want to just skip straight to the battle and the action if you don't want to hear any of the army comps. But for those that do, we will start now. So this Egyptian army has one, two, well, it has a mix of royal thorax swordsmen and thorax swords which are i'm pretty sure i just saw some are these uh no maybe the, oh yeah there we go there's some thorax swordsmen so there are <coughs> pardon me i'm still got a slight illness um which is basically denying me from doing any recording this week but we've basically got um a lot of royal thorax swords here we have basically all of them about eight i'd say so it's a very elite army he's also bringing up some ballista um, and has some cavalry, he's general here, so that seems to be it, very little um, missile if any, I mean I can't see it yet possibly, as I am in the defender's view so maybe I can't see it, we'll go on to Kush, and we'll get through the attackers first because they have the larger armies, the disciples of Atapen, Atapenmak, oh, I've definitely butchered that name, but they butchered some lines as well, so um, they're pretty fearsome warriors. They also brought an African ballista, and they also have African war elephants as their general, which is a very strange unit, um, really to bring as your general, because elephants can get scared by fire arrows, and with your general, would you really want to risk that? But obviously, at the same time, it's a very powerful unit, hard to kill. Um, they also have a lot of shotel warriors, which are going to be their main frontline troops. These guys look pretty nasty. Look at their swords. Um... And then, yeah, I think that's it. Just got a lot of Shotel Warriors. Yep. Um, okay, we'll go on to the second Egyptian army. I'm yet to see many archers. Um, I wonder if they'll, they'll appear in a bit. They may be hidden currently. But anyway, it's African War Elephants. Again, it is his general. So another risky play being made. More African Elephants here. Uh, Greek Onager. Um, so a lot of Elephants going into a Siege. I'm guessing breaking up any choke points if they uh, do appear. That's Pontus. We won't look at him yet. Um, he's also brought a lot of Royal Thorax swords, so this clearly is a uh, is a high high cost uh, sort of um, like there's a lot of funds was the was the limit, and this this uh, siege tower's already been um, destroyed, and this one's already gone. Um, Pontus is not even bothering to get it up. What else do we have here with Thorax spears? Um, I'm sure there's more stuff like archers hidden away, but we can't really see them yet. Um, Pontus' army is probably the most we can see. Um, we've got Pontic Royal Cavalry. Let's have a look at some of these guys. Haven't done any real close-ups yet. So, I mean, they look very Greek. They look very... Uh, they remind me of a uh, companion cavalry a little bit. And what have we got here? We've got Bronze Shield Pikemen. They, without their pikes at the moment, so they're just like normal guys with swords. We've got Elite Persian Archers. Uh, looking very, very... Uh, well, I say Elite. They're just in some robes. Um, Pontic Swordsmen. They, these guys, to me, look like some of their best-looking guys, in my opinion. They look goddamn awesome, and uh, he's brought quite a few of them. Good for him. And what's he got out front here? More Pontic swords, all like gold chevron. And he's brought some hoplites as well, which can almost going in as his um, cannon fodder. That's like how he just sees these guys. So anyway, that's, we've quickly gone over some of the uh, defending stuff. Now to the attackers. So we've got most, um, not the attackers, the defenders. We're now going on to the defenders. Oh dear. Um... Mercenary Cretan archers for firing off fire arrows right now. Look at these guys. Egyptians, just like Carthaginians, bring in a load of mercenaries because they ain't got enough of good stuff of their own. But, I mean, look at that. Look at that. 
That is a sight, if I've seen one. Um, they've also got a lot more Cretan archers retreating. Thorax pikes, which are going to be very good for uh, blocking up points. Galatian Royal Guard, which can be in there to support. These guys will not break anytime soon. Thorax swords. Uh, Royal Peltas, a lot of them. Is there some very, very uh, elite units. And we've also got uh, more Thorax swords. More th uh, we've got Thoros spears. They're going to be a bit more ca cannon fodder, I imagine. Um... And I think that's most of Egypt's forces. He's also got some Egyptian cavalry over here and an elephant of his own. Um, so that is so they could come into play. He's also uh, so we'll get on to Rome quickly. Obviously, Rome is going to have brought a lot of heavy infantry, uh, Praetorian guards, which are looking after some balls of death. We've got armored legionaries. Uh, we've got legionary cohort, which are probably going to be some of his cheaper like legionaries. Uh, yeah, armored legionaries over here. Um, Australian Syrian. Uh, archers, obviously they're going to be coming onto the battlefield. Veteran uh, legionnaires, which actually are probably the cheapest. But there's some of the mo more effective ones. Look at them. Look, they look excellent. Um, we've also got legion cohort, ever uh, Praetorian guard, quite a lot of Praetorian guard. Pretty sure there's some Evercati lying around, but I can't see them yet. Um, I'm pretty sure I spotted some veteran legionnaires. Veteran legionnaires. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe there was no Evercati. Maybe I was just making it all up. Well, um, it wouldn't be the first time, I'm sure. Um, but anyway, African pikemen here um, for Carthage. Carthage seems to be the one mainly that is going to look after these frontal assault. And they're letting them come onto the uh, onto the walls just like that as we're speaking. Um, so he's got a lot of sacred band. He's also got Libyan infantry. He's got mercenary Cretan archers himself. And he's also brought some Peltasts. Um, and he's also got... Uh, noble Cavalry. I'm pretty sure he's also got a separate General's Bodyguard unit, and he's got African Pikemen at the top. So, we that is the uh, that is the army comps over. That was as quickly as I could possibly do them because that is seven armies to go through, and I went in fair and decent detail. But here we have one of the first engagements, and it's the Shot Warriors up against the Sacred Band. I would think that the Sacred Band could hold their ground, being some of the more elite units of Carthage's uh, roster, and these Shot Warriors are kind of like. Uh, they're good, but I'm pretty sure they're just like the uh, the standard infantry. Uh, but I mean, they seem to be they're pushing in now. I mean, they're taking a lot of kills. Oh god, that guy there! Oh god, he got like about ten javelins to his chest. And now in comes the Libyan infantry as they like support and they're cutting them off from getting um, outflanking these sacred band and surrounding them. But I mean, they're fighting with this. Uh, this gate now. This is the first uh, kind of main objective because if they can get this, open the gates, they can really flood troops in, even though they already kind of are. Because the de attacker, uh, the defenders, sorry, have just let them get in. Look at these poor, they're just allowing them also just to gun them down. These sacred bands, yeah, need to just go in. I mean, they're not taking any losses yet, but they're getting softened up um, and there's going to get crushed in here. Best place it really is to kind of block them in here, um, take them from both sides, flank around, and then uh, kill these guys. Actually, no, maybe not flank around because he's got units in reserve. But all we know that he's going to, he's going to try and flank around. It's a brave move. If uh, if I was Kush, I'd go around through the middle here now and just uh, try and encircle the sacred band. Because he's not actually got any... This is all... Most of Carthage's infantry in this corner is now committed. It's already committed. Uh, oh, here we go. Here are Kush's uh, archers. The Royal Kushite archers coming up into position. Maybe getting onto the walls. He's also already got archers down here positioned, I presume, uh, firing on these mercenary Cretan archers. Um, oh, and we also have some spears. Some Kushite pikes. I did not did not see these guys. I presume they won't have their pikes out, but they look pretty good. Cool. They look pretty good. They look very, very uh, nasty. Not seen them yet on any, uh, like in any battle, I don't think. I didn't realize Kush had pikes. Um, but here we go. Their archers getting into position. I think they're going up. Oh, and there's now disciples of Atapen, the, the, the lion men, they're going up. Um, any engagements elsewhere? Egypt has already also engaged over here with Rome. Um, it looks like Rome is going to be designated this. It's not going to be, a, they're not going to allow an Egyptian civil war, which is strangely happening in the middle of this Germanic settlement. Um, which is quite strange, they depict a Germanic settlement and not in a single, so, like, side, side chose a Celtic or a Germanic faction. Just clearly know that they're just not the greatest. Not for this scenario, anyway. Um, but anyway, yeah, so they these guys are engaging. And they are... Uh, oh, that's a nasty beheading. 
That was nasty. Um, so, oh, was it already a retreat? Oh no, yeah, Libyan infantry retreating, but in in good order. Um, over here, Pontus has also now engaged. So uh, good to see the attackers are all attacking at once, not going in one by one. Um, they're keeping all the like the defenders occupied with stuff. This is a chaotic battle. Here, I can't really tell who's who. Like Egyptian, or the Pontus and uh, Egypt's quite uh, Greek. Uh, focused like faction, so they are their armor is very similar, their uniform is quite similar. But I mean, these guys, the Galatian Royal Guard, I can tell who they are and which side they're fighting for because they're like the most Celtic thing going on in this settlement, bar the settlement itself. Um, but I mean, yeah, these hoplites aren't getting anywhere right now, they look like they've just been cut off. And there's like some got up here and it's been a massacre. Jeez, it was a massacre, in fact. I think he's lost. Nearly an entire unit just doing that. Yeah, 24. This is probably that unit that's got cut out. Wow. Pontic Swordsman and Hotplates now. Um, Pontus here is having a hard time of it. He really should get some these units up onto the wall. Um, help try and help support out. Oh, Egypt's got units up here. Yeah, these are Egypt's units as well. So this is... We do have Egyptian Civil War. We have, because this is the good Egypt here represented by the light blue. And this is the bad Egypt represented by the red. And uh, there, there has been a fight. Not that you could really tell. It didn't look like there was much like... They were too friendly to each other. Like, hey Bert, yeah. Um, I I know you, you're a friend. Uh, I'm not going to fight you. It was like, but Clive, we, we've got to. I don't know why Bert and Clive. They're, just, they're not even Egyptian names. I don't really know any Egyptian names. Apart from Cleopatra. Um, but as you can see, there's now a retreat by the Egyptian forces, or the Galatian Royal Guard, under the Egyptians, um, they're running away. They, they're giving this, uh, this giving this area up really quickly. I, as is Carthage. Carthage is running very, very quickly. I think they could have held them for a little bit, and they should have. They should have tried to hold them as long as possible, inflict some, as much damage as possible. Because these towers, they'll do a lot of damage to, uh, like, infantry. They'll just, like, they're like machine guns. They just kill loads of people. Probably kill a good couple of hundred. Throughout this battle, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, here we go, a bit of a civil war. Thoros Spears fighting Thor Royal Thorax Swordsman. Yeah, these Thoros Spears don't really stand a chance. So, uh, yeah, you're going to die. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, it, they're running away. I think this is just a ordered retreat. I don't think that's a route. Um, but he did kill a few off doing it. They shouldn't have really run away. But, I mean, they should... Uh, they may put these defences up as well, and they're not actually going to defend these defences. I mean, this, to be honest, is only useful against calves, so... They'll break it down now. Uh, well, maybe not. These Royal Thorax Swords are just happy just to stand here. And the other Thorax Spear is about to break. So, yeah, just like that. All gone, right. So, I think the only action now happening is on this side. From what I can tell, oh the, yeah, they've already into the breach. They formed a, they have made a breach in the wall. Excellent, this is perfect. Cause they, there was only a, only two choke points. Oh well, one, two, and there is a sneaky route which I haven't really showed you guys that goes around here. And it's only defended by a cavalry unit at the moment. I think that is the Carthaginian general bodyguard, which is not the general though. So there is three ways up. Um. Well, this is to the final area, actually. So there's two, yeah, three ways up to this bit, two ways up to this uh, section. So this is even harder to break into. But they have uh, formed a third. So good on whoever this was that brought this down. Maybe Egypt. I presume Egypt. Um, it's a lot of people that died. A lot of like Syrian archers, I presume, died on the wall when this just like came down, which is kind of a waste because. Gonna need a lot, all the arrows you can get. Oh, and it's lagging. We're lagging for some reason. I'm gonna zoom out. It's probably because there's a lot of men on the battlefield. Yeah, there we go. Um, I'm just gonna zoom out for a little bit. We'll just see. So, look at the amount of units that have managed to get back to the uh, like the main defense, if you put it like that. Which is the problem. The first problem I've seen that the attackers have made. They did really well in all attacking together, but the problem they did was allow them to retreat. They allowed, like, you saw uh, earlier when I was showing the Glacian Royal Guard, they were all running off in column. There was about three units there. If they caught those three units and not allowed them to retreat, surround them, 
And that's three units that can't defend up here. And there's a load of Carthaginian units that have been allowed to defend over here. I don't know if the, the attackers are like, yeah, no, we're allowing you to retreat. Um, that's like the rules or something like that. Or not really, not really sure. But like, they, if they want to make this easier, I mean, the balance power is in their favour. But if they want to make this easier, then they should have like tried to entrap as many of those units as possible and just block off like the like the areas to return back. Like so, one, and then there's another one over there. They could have, and they couldn't have got to that one because most of their army was like over there killing stuff. So they've they've missed the trick there of the attackers, and it looks like looks like they're uh, not going to move anywhere anytime soon, especially like this e Egypt army, Egyptian army, and uh, the Cap I suppose I'm just naming it after the first like unit I see, and the Pontus uh, player and this Egyptian player are not going anywhere anytime soon. Well, this Egypt player's now got the problem of going in alone. Kush, I'm not really sh is being very passive now. Not even got anything near the defences. So really, someone should be saying to this uh, Egypt player, um, dude, stop. We uh, we need to slow down for a bit and just like move up because also he's getting through quite a lot of his troops. He's not got much left. He's got a few fewer spears and um, Royal Thoric swordsman, which he's already sending in ahead of like his Thoros spears. Um, he's got pikes. He's got I don't know if his artillery. He's got any ammo left. He's got some Rhodian slingers, which could be handy, but you really need more. He needs more stuff. But I wonder if he's he's out of he was short on money because he spent it all on that really elite infantry, which is quite possible. But I mean, now we've got pikes in with Roman infantry. These guys are probably gonna like hold for quite a while. I wouldn't expect any less. Look at the breach. Look at the breach. It's excellent. Excellent. And anyway, guys, thank you for anyway while we're. While we're waiting on the next move of the attackers, thank you so much for the support and the likes and subscribes that you've been giving recently. Also, why did they just send this hot plate unit up to just to go and die, basically? Look at the poor buggers. They just got sent up to die. But, um, but yeah, thank you for the support and keep it coming. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, if, if there's any requests that you want as well, please leave them in the comment. I'll try and do them. Um, because... I, always, I just want to cater for what you guys want to see as well. If you want to see, I don't know, like a, a Napoleonic battle, or if you want to see more Seven Kingdoms, or more Rise of Mordor, or 1212, or whatever, then please let me know. Um, and yeah, thank you again just for the support. It means so much. But anyway, back to the battle. After now, I've just done that little thank you very much and stuff like that. Um, it looks like the Thorax Swords are already getting ready to break. These Royal Thorax Swords are going to break. Uh, so, and these other ones don't look like they'll stand much longer. Ah, oh, here we go. There's some Evercati Cohort. I wasn't mad. There was some. Well, they better kill some people. Prove me. Make me proud. I mean, th this is going to pile up. If this was a, if there was a stat, like a piling system for bodies, they would have piled up a lot by now. But, um... It does look like it's just that breach that's fighting over. Still doesn't look like Pontus is doing anything. Kush is sending some troops forward, mate, or some archers, um, but not ma not masses. And I hope you've all got your snacks and some sort of like something to drink as well, because like this is a long one. As you can see down there, we still got like 40 odd minutes. Uh, there are some slow points which probably will be cut out, but it's still got a long ride, guys. Um, so yeah, you better be enjoying it. Um, oh, that was a good hit actually. I'm just while I was just talking there about quite a lot of Praetorians got taken out. A high pri high target, high prize target to take out, and he's not going to hit it this time. Oh, he just clips. He clips like a couple of guys. I'll probably get up. Yeah. Oh no, that guy's not getting up, or he is, but he's on fire. Uh, these archers doing a lot of damage. He's getting perfect, perfect angle. Because look. Just as they come over the ridge, they get hit by arrows, and yep, just like this chap, you die, and that guy, you die. Ah, oh, well, it's a beautiful sight. Look at all the stabbing, stabbing. Oh, it's so much carnage going on in here. So much carnage.
it's like a forest of pikes in here. And the Egyptians are fighting Egyptians and the Romans are laughing because they're just the middleman and they're just watching as these two uh, factions, well, the same faction destroys itself. And in the background you can see that, uh, well, the catapults just res I would say reluctantly, but it's not. It's it's just constantly uh, trying to destroy uh, the uh, these Praetorians. But actually, oh, it's going for the. Is it trying to open up another breach? Because if it does, that's, that's a really smart idea. Open up another breach about here. Kill a few guys in make doing so, but also just makes another breach. Because I mean, here right now, not a good spot to attack. Praetorians waiting on a bit of a ridge. Also, fireballs, never a good sign. Um, Pontus and Egypt over here, what are you doing? Get a move on, get up to the walls. And Kush can be the same. I mean, Kush should just get a move on. You need to keep momentum going. You're allowing them to uh, just kill this Egypt player on his own. I mean, he's doing as best as he can with uh, what he has. But also, I don't think he has any more ammo on his uh, catapult. And I don't think he's got much... He's not got many archers, so he can't really displace like units by range. He needs to, to get up a close personal, which is fine with African pikemen and Praetorians. Because they're probably going to win 9 times out of 10. So really, they need, there needs to be some sort of change here now. Elephants, not the solution. But uh, they may come in handy soon. Their time may come. Let's have a look. Let's see what else is going on then. Not really much. I might make a cut while, um, until another move happens because this is starting to die down as well now. These Hellenic pi pikemen aren't even really engaging. So I might make a cut and we'll see what happens in a little bit. So I will see you after this cut. So we have a development and somehow Pontus has managed to get down this sneaky sneaky road I was telling you about. He's managed to get past these African pikemen and he's managed to get cavalry up here. So he's got some Cappadocian cavalry up here and he's also got uh, another unit of Cappadocian cavalry and he's trying to go for the Roman general. Can he get him? Can he assassinate this guy in time? Uh, I th Currently yes, because there's no one going to help him. There's no one that can... Are the, who are these? Who are these? These look like Egyptians. Oh no, Carthaginians. Yeah, these guys will definitely be uh, of service. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, this Roman general is in pretty bad shape. But, I mean, he's near the front line. He may be hit. No, there's no one really around him to hurt him. And now there's infantry support. They're probably going to die. These. It was a good idea, though. And, like, the cavalry's not going to be any use any other way now. Um, it may be even better to send in any other cavalry that, like, Egypt had, or Kush. I don't think Kush brought much, if any, but I think Egypt brought some. Maybe. Or maybe not. I could be entirely lying to you there. Oh no, they had this unit over here. They should have brought this light cavalry up. They're quick as well. They'd be able to, like, get up into uh, the fort a lot even quicker. Um, okay, and they're now going for archers. That was a smart move. Um... Well, yeah, actually, it probably was, like, disrupted for a bit. They killed quite a few. Um, but it was worth it. Uh, Pontus hasn't done much in uh, any other way so far, but he has just, like, done a, l a little cheeky, cheeky little attack there. And this fight's still going on. I mean, it's constant. They've slowly been pushing the... Ro the Romans slowly been pushing them back down the hill. Look at this. Praetorians and armored legionaries. And then if they get pushed past them, look at all these guys ready and waiting for them. Carthaginian African pikemen. And uh, I think these are the Hellenic Royal Guards for like a, this Egypt player. The defending Egypt player. Um, but I mean, yeah, they're running, out of, they're running out of stuff to throw at them. Their pikes are depleted. These, uh, I th presume these are... What are these actually? These... Oh, there are spears have now been sent in. Wow. Yeah, these guys aren't going to hold strong. And now the pikes are coming in for the uh, defenders. The African pikemen are coming down the hill. Uh, imagine having to hold a pike and keep it steady while coming down this hill. At this steep incline. And look at them. They're just pushing on. They don't even care. Look at these guys. They're mad. They really need to uh, reform because they're just going to get cut down if they're doing that. 
It's just asking for disaster. Look, they're already putting their... Oh, he's already putting his uh, pike down. Yeah, they're going back up. They did not like that. But that was... Uh, that was impressive by the African pikemen. Even if it was, like, a mad decision. They just pushed down all the way down here. Pushed these poor... Uh, throw spears right off the uh, position. Like, look at Egypt. He's run out of so much stuff. I mean, he's still got... Three units of Royal uh, Thorax Swordsman, and that's about it. That is about it. Wow. He's got some light cavalry. Um, unless, like, he sent stuff other elsewhere, then... Oh, he's got some archers here as well, like Rhodian Slingers. But yeah, he's running out of stuff. He just... He needed more... He needed to rely on his teammates to do other stuff as well, because he had one choke point to go through. This is very easy for, like... Then the defenders to defend because no one else is attacking. Oh, but it looks like Pontus is making a move. Maybe Pontus is going to make a move here. Finally. I sound like I'm being really horrible just to Pontus, but I mean, he's also probably got the toughest faction to use uh, for an assault. Really, you should be relying on uh, the two Egypt factions to be really taking this day and really firing it out because they've got probably the best, uh, best suited units. I mean, Kush has some good solid melee units. Um,. So they should do that. Oh, well, they're not just going to stand there, are they? Please don't stand. Just stand here because they're going to take so many. Da they're going to take so many casualties. Yeah, you're going to take so many casualties to these arch towers. They just rack up kills. Um, but anyway, why don't they just stand there and die? Let's just go back to this. Look at the bodies. Oh, and that looks like a lot of Egyptian bodies. That could be friend or foe. Like depending on which side you're d uh, you're backing, if it's defenders or attackers. Let me know in the comments if you're. Uh, back in the defense of the attackers. The defenders are still up against it. The balance of power is still well in the attackers' favor, but I mean, it's whether you take that into consideration because sometimes that can be a bit buggy. I mean, look at this. They're just like the Carthaginians now have got noble uh, fighters down here and they've cleared off these Egyptians. They routed them. I, I, if I was this guy, I wouldn't be sending these three units in. I'd just be safe. Look at so, how many units there are here. You gain nothing. You might as well just become like a a support faction, a support unit at this point, and let like the other three factions do some work because you've t look. He's lost his entire army in this choke point. That's just how it how it's gone. There's so much death. Like there's the first line of defense you can see here, a second line of defense here, and then this third line of defense. Which God, this is the worst one of them all. I've never seen this many bodies. I don't think ever. In like this one position, I probably have, but I mean, God, it's it's pretty bad. It's a carpet, it really is. But Pontus is uh, just gonna stand here. It would seem he's quite happy to stand here. Um, he's gonna go and take more arch towers by the looks of it instead. What is he doing? It's just wasting units. He's going and taking arch towers. It's just not beneficial for anyone. Okay, I presume this is the other Egypt player that's uh, getting these Thoros spears into position. Um. I feel like there's something coming big, something coming big soon, but I mean, I don't know whether it's coming anytime soon. It needs to come soon, otherwise it's going to make another cut. Look at all these archers that these guys have. They could, like, focus down anyone. I mean, good idea to focus down archers, but you could focus down any of these, like, high target units. Thorax Swordsman, no, not necessarily. Royal Peltas, certainly. Any legionary unit, to be honest. Um... It's like decent. Veteran Legionnaires, possibly. Certainly Praetorians, if you can find some of them. Focus them. Oh! Oh, okay. So the so the fireballs have gone off. We've gone off in the direction of the Praetorian Guard. And, um, yeah, they, they they did a thing there. The Royal Kushite uh, archers somehow snuck up there and did that. I, I just saw that out of the corner of my eye. That was excellent. These poor Praetorians are like getting have been destroyed but I mean it, now it's gonna bite them in the bum and they're getting cut down oh god yeah that's a I feel that's a good trade there's a lot of Thoros spears that died there but I mean a lot of Praetorians died as well I'd say I think the broom came off better there and in, in the end um yeah I don't think there's any communication between Kush and uh, Egypt over the, like the setting off of that and like it's like you sh probably shouldn't have put your your troops there man I was going to do a sneak. I did a sneaky little special forces move, but I mean, here come the here come the Thoros spears in the distance. 
There they are, marching up those Praetorians. They can hear the tr tramp of their feet. And they're done. They're not gonna they're not gonna fight. Someone else is going up. Oh, so they're gonna put their Thora Spears up against um, the enemy's Thora Spears here. And Praetorians, okay. Here we go. Oh so many javelins, so many javelins. Here we go. It's gonna be a clash. And oh okay, we're forming some interesting formation. Oh, we're forming like a shield. Um a square and then oh enough test judo excellent perfect just what it needed oh and it's all lit up perfect imagine if it was at night oh yeah that's I mean it's certainly gonna do like a lot of uh, damage well not gonna mean that not many uh, casualties are inflicted I can't get words out today I'm so sorry I mean their formation certainly saving them from projectiles these guys are still getting killed because they're not putting their shields up Oh, but that's yeah. Oh, that was lucky that they missed. Um, but you you can't. Oh, just glanced in there, uh, getting a few kills. Uh, right here comes the final one. Uh, no, no. I want one juicy hit. One juicy hit. That saw. That was okay. Got a couple. I wanted. Yeah, this is the one I can tell. No, no, no. Whoever's shooting this artillery must be drunk. He's missing every shot. I presume he is aiming for this because this is a good target if you hit it once. Just manly fire or get your archers to do it instead, yeah. What a... What a drunk uh, artillery piece that was. Um, I presume it's just on most of its ammo now because it's stopped or it's just been given the order to stop because it's just... It's imbecilic. But this has got to mean something. This is, they're not hiding that they're going for a huge push here now. Here, and here they come. This is the huge push. Wow. Wow, these guys are getting cut down. And these are Thorax swords, you imagine, are just going to cut them up. Because they're just no match. They're so beaten and so tired of these Thorax spears. Those swordsmen would just destroy them. I mean, these Praetorians as well. Man, I'd have just got them out of here by now. They're not the best, best unit to be uh, having is just soaking up ammo. Because they're so elite. You don't want these guys in there. You don't want these guys sacrificing their lives. That's what you got legionaries for. What have we got back here then? Oh, Kush is also getting his troops up ready. Um, please tell me this isn't Egypt. What is happening here? Okay, so Kush has sent some f forces over. Smart. And um, not really made any, any, mo any more advances really. They're now just charging into pikes and trying to get around them. Um... Which is sort of working. Um, Egypt, if you did it on the other side, then they could certainly get a beachhead on this like, on this area. But I mean, look how much these Thorax saw a uh, pikemen have leveled up. So many kills. Here we go. Um, yeah, it's sort of working, but it's just sort of not. He just needs to like get them to get the order to go around and then attack them, so they flank on the side, and then these Thorax pikes will die pretty quick. Oh, this that choke point is just what has happened? So much death. Um, has Pontus made a move yet? No, no, he's oh he is possibly now. But early, like I was saying, you shouldn't just stand there. Look at all these guys that died for no reason. No reason. A Pontic swordsman. Here we go. They're getting ready to go up. Please tell me you're going up. I don't want you just to stand here. No, don't just stand here and just let this arch tower shoot you. Here we go. Up they go. That looks excellent in the distance. Oh no. Yep. Interesting test judo. And here comes Sacred Band. They're coming down to meet them. Not a great decision. You probably want to um, go up to them and fight them. Actually, I don't know. So Carthage is coming out to fight Pontus here, it would seem. And Pontus doesn't really want to fight by the looks of it. He's just more happy to run away. And he's made a nice big gap for uh, people to go around and outflank his units. Oh, here comes more. That's good. That's good. We've got to see... M there's more Pontus Pontic units going up. Um, how's the fight going on in the centre, then? Um, well, there's some fire, which... Oh, lights. Horses on fire. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, so there's Praetorians. Look at this. Can't be many of them left, and they're still holding. Or well, some of them are, anyway. They're just about to break. Oof. It's just destroyed them. It's 
So we've got Thorax Swords against Thorax Swords at this point. Egypt against Egypt. And they're both fairly beaten up. There's them certainly more. Um, Kush should just send in units at this point. Like, look, you could surround this unit, kill this off, try and save his own. His elephants are coming up. We certainly need to send units in if you're going to send elephants in. Elephants, I've learned from many times from experience, just aren't good on their own. Like, they'll get a, f a few kills, but they get focused down so quickly. You need arch, uh, not archers. Oh, God, yeah, see what I mean? Focus down. You need, um... Oh, dear, what do you need? You need infantry, that's the one. I mean, two elephants are already dead. Not a good sign. And they're already mad. Yikes, well... And, I mean, look how much damage they do. If, like, if you had an infantry up here to support this, this could be useful. Because they break the formation up. Infantry then take advantage of the formation break, and elephants just cause havoc. But, I mean, they're already all dead. There's just two of them left. Sad. Poor elephants. Oh, no! He'd be dead. And there he goes. Poor old elephants. What a waste. Those peaceful beasts died for nothing. Justice for the LEs. Okay, so it looks like Egypt's been given the, the ground over here. They felt bad and just like, yeah, go on Egypt, take it. You, we didn't really want it anyway. Um, we just fought and died and killed hundreds of your men as well, just for, for no reason. But anyway, so we've got Evercati uh, cohort, Legion cohort, and Praetorians. And some... Syrian archers all trying to hold. Oh, pardon me, I am still I'm still not 100 percent It it shows. It shows. My commentary has not been the greatest, I apologize, but I'm conscious that I've got to get more uh battles out, otherwise the the channel dies. <laughs> and no one wants that. So these Royal Thorax swords Flanking decisively, uh, yeah, they were flanking decisively and winning decisively. That's what I was trying to say. But flanking decisively sounds cool. Uh, Praetorians are breaking. Um, here we go. Here come the lion men. Huzzah. They're going to kill them all. Imagine if you had a lion uh, in battle with you. That would be pretty cool. You could just use it as like a bodyguard. Just like, yeah. I'm not scared of you. I've got my pet lion doing stuff. Oh, okay. So they, they're kind of just defending their flank while also making offensive over here. Not the greatest unit to make a flank with. Um, pikes, especially when there's a lot of archers around. But looks like the Romans aren't going to bother letting them just flank. Uh, just stand there. They probably could look like they're going to charge in. Oh, no. Or will they just like throw their pillum back, which would be devastating if they do. They've got ammo and they've got pillum. I would... You chuck that in there like mad. Because these guys can't really use their shields effectively unless you're like actually firing on that angle. Here we go. This jabby jabby of the pikes. Hit, hit back like they've just been hit by like a, a small car or something. This elephant looked like it was burnt, but it's, it's not. It's not. A jewel! A show to warrior against a veteran legionnaire. <gasps> and the show to warrior killed him. Killed him. Oh, and he took a leg off! Nice kill. It's not really what I'd do, like, after just killing a man, just then chop his leg off, but... If that's you, then that's you. Can you get a second kill? No, no. That, that was him. That was him done. So it looks like their defenders are more committed now to defending this, uh, the, defending their choke points. And they don't have much now in the center, but it's whether the attackers have enough really to attack. Which they don't seem to, certainly on the left hand side. Kush is certainly now supplying all of the army here. Um, 
Center, not much going on. Um, Kush again is like a help support in this area. Egypt with his units is being pretty passive. Pontus is the most passive player, but he's now making an attack. And he's sitting on his own, doesn't he? Kush, he's a big boy. He can do this. Such a beautiful game. Oh, and here we go. A huge breakthrough by uh, Pontus. Those men look like they're breaking while doing it. But, I mean, this is huge. If Pontus can wrap around and kill all these units, there's only four units, but four or nine units that are holding up his advance. And if he does that, he can probably push on towards, well, the center. You take the center. And there's only a Thorax Swordsman unit that could stop him effectively. And maybe some noble fighters now. They're pretty beaten up. Look, they're already having to send more units back this way. They they know that there's a there's a problem here with Pontus. There's actually quite a major problem here with Pontus. It's, I I criticised Pontus because it was one of the most indirect and just slow players ever played. But he, he's getting the work done. He's getting the work done. Now we have, well, look at this. This is a huge breakthrough. Also, look at this Hellenic Pike unit here. They've been just gunned down, I presume. Because, I mean, the, there's no way they'd hold this formation if they hadn't been, like, shot to pieces. Um, but, I mean, again, what a waste. There's been quite a lot of wastage by the attackers. They've had a lot of units that have just been stood around taking Archer fire. But then again, at the same time, the um, the attackers, yeah, the attackers have been wasting troops. The defenders have been doing it as well. We're getting some lag as some elephants are running around. Chaotic elephants. Um, but yeah, the Praetorians here wasted in their Thoros spears. Thoros spears not so bad. They are kind of can be used as a as a as a bit of a shield. But Praetorians, that's a sacrilege to do that. But, I mean, these elephants, man, not really done their their best stuff. Not in this case over here anyway. Now supported by uh, infantry, and they still can't do it. I mean, this Egypt player is gonna is causing some real trouble. Now he's actually managed to get caught, catch some. Uh, I would say disciples of Atapen map, but that's not right. They caught Galatian Royal Guard out. That's a good unit to catch out. That's very uh, low, but don't know how strong that was initially. Um, Pontus really needs to have made a move and just got to move on because like they were able to set up so much defenses just because Pontus has gone like no that's it we're, we're done and uh, if he just rushed he could have possibly maybe not got to the point which is I presume like here but he could have like certainly um, he could have forced like them to have to retreat and to pull back forces from elsewhere because oh well they might have they might still be able to I think royal guard are now uh, have now won here the like the evil Egypt is in Pontus is in Kush is in and this other e evil Egypt which is nearly dead is also in wow I wonder if they just retreated again on like there's an order was given and they just retreated because they all seem to just disappear the defenders Awesome. They had so many guys at this wall and over here and a few over here. And they were all they've all gone. But there are these cav that are still left. These cav will kill them all. Egyptian cavalry, so they're okay. Ptolemy cavalry. Very good. Excellent. Love to see it. So now it's probably the long, long wait until uh they're ready to go again, which hopefully isn't too long. Is this it? This is going to be round three. 
It would seem so. Oh no, just one guy dying. That's, that's that is it. Jeez, my I can't speak today. I just can't speak. I'm making noises. Well, yeah, these guys must be out of ammo, or they're just because they're nearly dead. They just send them in. Um, Pontus again. I don't know what you're doing. Like, look at this. Actually, no, this is enemy. Damn, I keep getting mixed up which one's the enemy and which one's the good guy, like general. I don't even know who I'm so, like favoring. I kind of want the defenders to win it now because like they've got so little left. Um, they've not got really any archers. They've got no artillery. They've got all their generals, so have the attackers, I think. Um, they haven't got. They haven't actually got, have actually got all their generals? I don't know. I don't know if Egypt's. Good general for Egypt. Good general for Rome. Good general for Carthage. Excellent. Well, so, they have got everything. I thought they might have lost the general, but they haven't. But they are going to go out and attack these. Elite Persian archers, which they shouldn't be really allowed to do. They should have these guys in skirmish mode. I'm just going to come down. Oh, I don't like to see this. They're getting out spears, which is very cool. I do like that. But, uh, which is probably why they're elite. But, I mean, it's not on. Don't want to see this. Wow. What a waste. What a waste of archers. Could really ha use them in, like, late game. Just to shoot down pikes. And this the attackers definitely still have pikes. Yep, yeah, broke one of the units. Well, that's going to be a mission success. Now he's committing. Uh... Shit, yeah. He's now got. Uh, he's now got to go and just basically attack um, straight head on. They've got. I think they've still got some pikes. They've certainly got sacred band. Um, no, they've used up all their pikes as well. I. Pre I think. Pontus has got pikes. Yeah, he's got bronze shield pikes. Um, Kush certainly hasn't committed his pikes yet. So really, they should just go up there with pikes, and they could probably poke their way in, just with long sticks and with arrows, because they've got like one unit of archers now, and I think they're committed to yeah, they're committed to melee. Here come their pikes actually on this side, but they do have the mighty archer towers, which no one can stand against. So that should be. Um, their policies, the defenders, defend around these arch towers, that keep them alive and under control, and they'll just get all the kills to you, like these two points here, get use these. Um, they really want, Pontus really should commit like a good force down here, like two, three units of infantry, maybe some cavalry as well to try and get lightning speed to get there, race up to um, the top here and just force these guys on another choke point, because they ain't got much Infantry that's in good quality to condition now. Like these two armored legionnaires, are some of the only infantry that's left that's not uh, unspoiled. We'll put it like that, or had men die in it. There's another way of putting it, as it, I guess. But um, royal pearl tasks. Yeah, we could probably, probably could do with a couple more of them. Um, look at this. They're just standing off now, like. I know you've got pikes. Oh, they do have one unit pike then. They have one unit of African pikes. Like, I know you've got pikes, but we have pikes. We have more pikes. And they're sending in their archers to try and do some damage. Not a bad idea. Um, it'll force them to drop some of their pikes. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Oh, it's got another unit of pikes behind, so this is going to be the Hellenistic pikes. So maybe yeah, they have got plenty of pikes. I was wrong. That's not a great shot. We'll uh, get a better one. Here we go. Ooh. Hundreds, mate. Hundreds have died. It's pretty awful. If not thousands. Um, what was I looking for? What was I looking for? There we go. This is what I'm looking for. Excellent. Okay, so, I mean, these guys are just breaking because of no reason by the looks of it. Pontus really needs to send troops round Egypt's doing it but it's the wrong Egypt um, but yeah that's about it that's, that's, there's not much else to say I'm trying to think of other things to say it's just kind of a grind now I'm waiting I mean I'm just gonna leave it over here and we're just gonna watch the grind as a 
we wait for the inevitable. Units on both sides breaking. There's, there's neither side is happy with how the war's going. Everyone's dying in it. Oh, this is a good maneuver. This is a good maneuver. He's gone narrow formation, yep, yeah, and he's gone for a flank, and then with Thorospears, and now they're flanking in on these pikes. But um, he's seen it, and it's a bit late in reacting to it, but he is able to now keep these guys in combat because, well, they, ju they just are. It's not like in Hollywood or in like anything else where you can just run away. I mean, not like they do really run away anyway. They just go on and fight the big old villain and kill him in like a, any any period film. I don't know why Kush isn't just pushing up. I mean, like he has the more pikes in numbers to kill him. He's got more swords. Yeah. Definitely got more swords. Um, but who knows? We'll see. We'll see. Like, if these Rodian slingers have any ammo, get it on these guys straight away. Because, like, I mean, 116 pikes is still a lot of pikes. Really need to get that on to about 90, 80. Then it starts to become a problem for the pike formation. Oh. Galatians in the back there. Well, they say they're cheering, but really they shouldn't be cheering because they've been running away for most of the battlefield. Um, more Pelzas. Oh. So this siege is nearly over, and it look I'm I'm still none the wiser who's actually going to win. I think as the battle goes on, uh, the attacks will have it because they've just got the numbers and they can allow their Avengers to, try, uh, to uh, re heal. Not re heal, re, re uh, energize. Or Rome, Carthage, and uh, Egypt, I keep forgetting there's another Egypt, are able just to well, have to go from one place to another to put out fires. They're running out of troops that they can allow just to rest up. Oh, my apologies for that. Um, Kushites, Pikes, what are you doing? It's not going in. These guys are Pikes, just send them in. These mercenary noble fighters know nothing. They know nothing. It's terrible. It's a lot of... This unit is dancing around, not dancing around, but around. Surprised with the uh, love of elephants in this room. These are well, these are African war films have been in. Apparently, they've been in a fight, possibly here or here. Not quite sure where they went in for a fight. Maybe here, maybe here. No. I don't know then, I don't know where those guys died, but there's a lot of elephants still left. Got another lot of war, war elephants here. They just need to send in some, I know it's a general, but I mean, if they sent in one of the African war elephant units, disrupt all of this, and you support by a lot of infantry. If only they listen to me. But I mean, yeah, look, just standing here is achieving nothing. Oh, actually, well, they're being held up by some noble fighters, but not many. 73 losing decisively, so they must be, like, all trapped in. Actually, they could be anywhere, to be honest. They just need to retreat um, to the defenders. Like, if they put their pikes across here, they could probably still defend that. You can't get around here. Um, so, yeah, just do that. Because they have not... I don't know they've got much art drama left. If they were going to use it like strategically, they wouldn't even bother sending up all these troops. Oh well. Oh, that's a good hit. Is he sniping out the general? I think he is. Wellington would not be a approve that. Yep, and neither is that general. He's he's not having it. Just stand there. Just yeah, yeah. Well, 
That's don't see that every day. Good old Pontus trying to stab out the general. Yeah, he, he's now can't even see them, so they're they're just stuck. Do your I mean do your animations. Do something. Oh, that's a good hit again. Oh, that's a lot of friendly fire there. Actually, no, that wasn't. That was a that was a little bit of friendly fire. Oh, that's a lot of friendly fire in that one though. He's also getting quite a few kills. Yeah, that one was just a bit, just a miss. Good miss. Can't be much left in this battle. A minute thirty. That's all it is. Personally, I Kush the Kush Pikes attacked and they broke. Okay. Didn't see that coming. Surely the defenders are going to break any minute now. Oh, yeah. Here they come. The Noble Cavalry. Okay, so Carthage is gone. Carthage is gone. Egypt looks like he's about to go. Rome? Rome's all that's left. Rome's only got a medium uh, general bodyguard. Well, a general bodyguard that's like about a medium strength or half strength. Um, this for Ptolemaic Cavalry is also just all that's holding on. For Egypt, I mean, they, these pikes over here don't know they're going anywhere anytime soon. But I mean, you just shoot them with arrows. These like really, these Crucian archers would do a lot of damage. They they kill quite a lot of people. But everything's breaking, but the general here. Quite interesting. Very. Well, dear, that's it. That's this is going to be the battle. I think he's sending his generals to die as as Rome. Um, yep, and that's Egypt's one broken and running. Didn't see... It was... Didn't see any, like, cavalry charges going out to, like, harass them, which would be kind of handy. Obviously not with generals, but maybe with, like, um... Assistant or something like that. Assistant. Um, like, a Another cavalry unit. An assistant cavalry unit. But anyway, guys, that was the bat. That was the siege. I hope you enjoyed. It was a long one, I know. Um, both powers, both you and I powered through. It was an experience, and I fully enjoyed it. I mean, look at the death over here. Like, the Egypt inflicted. No wonder. Um, like, they ran out of troops and they just came to the final bit. So, the attackers are victorious. Um, this was set in, sent in by uh, Butterfunga, who played as Rome. Um, we have, well, well, look at Double first. He got quite a lot of kills with his uh, Mercenary Noble Fires. They did excellent. Um, his African Pikemen doing okay. His Cretan Archers is actually doing respectfully quite well as well. Um, but a Funga, he had very good success with his Praetorian Guard, as you expect. And his Veteran Legionnaires doing fairly well generally. Archers didn't really perform. Um, and his other units did okay as well. Um, Washo, who played as a defending uh, Egyptian player. Um, his African elephants getting 400 kills just over that. Uh, Mercenary Rodian Slingers doing fairly well there as well. Um, and his Pikes doing excellent as expected, as we saw quite a lot. Um, the Real Mitch, who played as Kush, um, did fairly well to be fair. I didn't realise his general died. Um, actually no, I should have I should have seen that because everything else broke for him. Um, but I mean, yeah, his Show to Warrior is doing very well and his um, Disciples of Atabern Mac, look at them. Doing excellent. So he li literally lost nearly his entire army. But um, he did well. Um, Joe. Uh, Joe. Johnny Kaisley. That's how I'm going to say that. Um, definitely butchered that probably. Um, this is the guy that brought like a load of uh, Royal Thorax Swordsmen. He had a really hard time to be fair. As you can see, like, apart from like one unit, nothing else broke over 100. He had a real tough time just trying to break through everything. All of 2000. Um, Who's the other more passive um, Egypt player? You'd say he did very well with his Thorax swords as well, and his Galatian Royal Guard performed fairly well. I mean, his Greek Onager getting over 100 kills—that's pretty good for an artillery piece. Um, even if it was drunk at points and couldn't hit anything, and then Pontus here, yeah, he had a pr um, so his units did okay. But I mean, he also 
mismanaged some of them, I thought. Like, certainly with Arch Towers, I mean, you just need to keep an eye and see what ranges they were going up. Because, it's like, he lost a good 20, 30 men sometimes just to Arch Towers and just putting them where they shouldn't be stood. Um, but, yeah, anyway, well done to them all. Uh, thank you for this battle replay um, by Butterfunger. I really enjoyed it. And I hope you guys did as well. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe for more uh, uh, Rome 2 content. And until next time, guys.